before, Ryan, about uh, the government's a little bit thirsty these days. I don't think there is any tax relief, unfortunately, coming in any of our lifetimes. No. So as the business owner, if you are incorporated and you're interested in having the fruits of your labor get into the genes of your own family and hopefully not so much over to the government, permanent insurance owned by a corporation is a massively effective tool in that regard. Right, right. Where you have, uh, again, a family business or an, an incorporated individual that works for themselves. The corporation shall own and pay for, with after-tax dollars, I might add, um, a life insurance policy based on the life of that individual, the person with the company, the person doing the work. Mm -hmm. And in time, as you fund this policy with corporate dollars, you will then establish a death benefit that will be able to be coming out of the corporation into personal hands. This is a way of getting that corporately earned money, the fruits of your labor, of your business, into the hands of your beneficiaries without paying the personal income tax rates to right. get the money out of the corp. Right. So. Yeah. Let me see if I got this straight. So you can use your business and your business dollars, mm -hmm. not your personal dollars, right. but you could use your business dollars to buy an insurance policy mm -hmm. that the business would own, insured on the key person's life in right. the business, the owner. Or Has the, to be a shareholder. Or the, yeah, the for, sh for there to be the interest there. That's right. Yeah. And so it, if that person, any one of those key people pass away, that are the, sh the shareholders, the owners of the incorporated business, mm -hmm then there'd be a life insurance payout yes which then could be used uh to buy that person's interest out with the you know potential other shareholders right. or, or left to the uh estate yep. um, of that deceased shareholder but is there also policies where these insurance programs not only have the life insurance benefit mm -hmm. uh, for the risk of the death but a cash value component, so it's, it's basically generating money under a shelter yes. within the corporation. Yes, exactly right. And how does that work? How that works, the life insurance policy, if you use something called universal life, mm -hmm. you're going to have an investment account within your life insurance policy. Right. Now, once you contribute premium dollars to that life policy, you are now investing in the capital markets. Right. You can choose if you want to own your dividend paying companies or your energy index or international bonds or whatever you feel the right use. As though you're investing outside of the life policy, what's the smart investment? You can do that inside the life policy. Yeah. The great benefit being as long as you don't breach certain maximums that are imposed upon the, uh, by the government, imposed mm -hmm. upon the policy, mm -hmm. they're generous enough to make this very worthwhile, I might add. Once you're doing that investment within the policy, you never technically end up owing tax on your investment growth. Right. Personally, we have the tax-free savings account as a way to invest money, grow it without owing any tax on the investment growth. Mm -hmm. This life insurance policy, which can end up being a greater pool in size than your tax-free savings account, is another way to do that. Right. So now if we're paying for life insurance premiums, using corporately taxed dollars rather than personally taxed, that's going to be a savings right there because corporate rates are lower than personal rates. Right. Now we're investing money and growing it in the capital markets, not paying tax on the investment growth. That's another win for the policy. Right. Now we can stream that money out to other shareholder beneficiaries. This will tie back into your idea of the primary will and the secondary will. Right. When we have a business owner with a secondary will Here's what's going on with the company assets when the time comes. Now we've got this life insurance policy laid in there where the corporate assets are going to be extracted without paying personal tax rates right. by those people doing the extracting. Yeah. You know, so bottom line, if you have an incorporation, you need to be talking to the two of us or your respective lawyer and insurance and tax advisor because the key here is there's, there's a real opportunity to create greater maximizations. Yeah of not only wealth generation, uh, legacy and succession planning, Absolutely. Uh, but then risk uh, you know, insulation as well, you right. know, upon, upon your death. I mean, no one's gonna live forever. So uh, there's a lot of huge benefits. And again, to, to give a, a plug to Matthew here, I mean, this is, this is what I've done myself personally. Um, you know, learned about this not a number of years ago, and uh, I'll probably continue to look at you know, more, more of this because uh, with the government taking away a lot of our 
small business corporate uh, tax savings options. You know, yep. you can't do income sprinkling anymore. Right. They're really watching uh, companies and, and saying, you know, your spouse is working for the business. Um, you know, they're really clawing down on what a, a small business owner can do. Right. And it seems that the insurance, uh, and probably rightfully so, is just kind of an untouched area. It's not going to be something that they're going to really be able to probably take away right. um, because it, it's it's intertwined in so many other aspects of life as well and, right. and planning. And has uh, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but I don't think an insurance company has ever not met their guaranteed payouts. Is that is that right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they've yeah. got something like a hundred and something years There's of absolute guaranteed, uh, guaranteed returns, and we're at, we're talking at pretty good rates, uh, considering it's almost one hundred percent guaranteed. Yes. And um, and I mean that's just uh, I mean you can put you spoke about maximums. You know, with TFSAs and RSPs, you know we're We've got our caps, and they're not very high when you, exactly when you, when right. you think yeah. about it. I mean, I yeah. think it's less than 30000 for an RSP in a year for somebody of mm -hmm. a high highest income bracket. Right. And TFSAs, I think, are seven grand or something yeah, like that. I can't remember. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, you're not even at forty grand. Right. Um, but with the insurance uh, option, I think it, it far exceeds forty. If you, it sure if does. If your business yeah. was retaining yeah. money... Yeah, um, in its in its corporate coffers, um, mm -hmm. you should get it moved. Exactly. And as long yeah. as you're continuously moving it according to your insurance, I, I think you uh, you're going to really grow a sizable nest egg. A massive one. Yeah. Yeah. This is because uh, the amount of insurance you purchase will then dictate the size of your investment account. Okay. So if you purchase a one million dollar, a five million dollar life insurance policy. Now you're going to have a maximum contribution room that is far in excess of your RSPs and TFSAs. Right, right. You know, $150,000 a year, $200,000 a year. Very good. And then get that working. Yeah, very good. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, Matthew, for all this information. A pleasure. Really appreciate our time as always. Thanks to you as well. Thanks, guys.